What is going on guys? Kenny here from 619 Guitars and Gear and in today's video we're going to check out yet again another guitar that I have little to no experience with. I'm actually pretty excited about this one. It is an Epiphone Les Paul Traditional Pro. So as always, let's get into it. Alright, well welcome back to another video. Just like the last review, I'm pretty excited about this one because yet again it is another brand that I've never had on the channel. And it's another guitar that I really have little experience with. Obviously throughout the years I've worked on them for people and you know fiddled with them before I gave them back and stuff. But I've never actually had the time to sit down and really just see what they're all about. And uh, now I am the owner of one so it's pretty cool, definitely pretty exciting. Uh, we're going to go through everything in this video. Before we get into specs and anything, I just want to say thank you so much for watching this video. If you're new here, I want to welcome you to the channel. Uh, go ahead and hit that like button. Leave a comment down below. And uh, if you like this video or videos like this, maybe think about subscribing. But let's jump into some, some specs. We're going to go through everything. You heard it in a full demo mix. We're going to do uh, the guitar by itself with just distortion and clean and go through all the different tonal options that it offers. And then uh, we'll talk about some things. I will tell you my full honest opinion about this guitar. So as far as specs, you have, you know, your basic Epiphone Gibson style specs on this thing. But there's definitely some things that stand out that I really, really like. So you have a 2017 model here. It is made in China. And as far as the whole Chinese, not Chinese, USA, Korea debate, I don't really care about any of that stuff. Honestly, it can be a guitar made in Joe Schmo's backyard. And if it's a good playing guitar, I don't care where it was made. Uh, so pretty much none of that stuff matters to me. But you have a solid mahogany body with a mahogany top. Um, you have what they call a heritage sunburst finish. Now, what I really, really like is the fact that the front of the uh, body and headstock are gloss. And then in the back, you have this really nice dark cherry finish that is uh, a matte finish. So that's really cool. I love the mixture of matte and gloss on guitars. I think it just really separates it and uh, definitely turns it into an eye catcher. Honestly, I love the color of the back of the body and the neck. Uh, it's kind of like this open pour. They didn't seal it or anything, so it has a really cool feel to it, but it's still smooth at the same time. Um, I honestly wouldn't mind if the whole guitar looked like this, to be honest with you. But I really definitely love the mixture of gloss and matte finish. I just think that's something that's always kind of been a like to me. So as far as the neck, you have a set mahogany neck. Uh, you have a rosewood fretboard with the trapezoid pearl inlays. You have a 14 inch radius with 22 medium jumbo nickel frets. Uh, you have 24.75 inch scale, which is your typical Les Paul Epiphone style Gibson scale. Uh, you have, I'm not sure of the material, but you have a 1.68 nut width. Um, but honestly, between the nut, the, the tuners and the bridge and everything, you have some good tuning stability, but we'll get into that later. Uh, as far as the binding, you have a cream colored single ply binding going around the whole body and neck. Uh, I honestly really love the cream thing on this guitar. It definitely sets it off, gives it that vintage uh, vibe, kind of like that old Ace Frehley look to it uh, with the cream colored pick guard and pickup rings. And then you have the cream color on the zebra, you know, colored pickups with the 
poker chip. Everything's just like that off white. I think it's a really cool, uh, a really cool look, and I really like it. Uh, as far as the electronics, you have Open Coil, Zebra, Alnico Classic, and a Pro Bucker Three pickups. You have two volumes, two tones with the push pull for coil splitting. That was something I was surprised about. I didn't even know about that until I got it home. And I was playing it and I just happened to pull up on it and I was like, oh, wow, that's pretty cool. So definitely a cool touch. I really like that. Uh, you have a three-way pickup selector with the typical, like I said, cream-colored cap and the cream-colored poker chip on there. Uh, so as far as hardware, it is all nickel hardware, probably dipped in chrome. Uh, you have a Loctone Tunematic bridge with the stop bar tailpiece and then you have the die cast grover tuners i believe they are 14 to 1 ratio and then uh it's like i said between the tuners the nut and the bridge this thing has some awesome tuning stability probably one of the best tuning stabilities on a guitar of this price range that i've played in a long time uh, i've let this thing hang for days and you know turn my heater on let it get cool in here i always run my humidifier so it's 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 seen a couple different temperatures and this thing stayed in tune. The neck stayed perfectly still. And so I'm pretty impressed by that for sure. Uh, as far as the knobs, the knobs are chrome, but they used to be like that clear amber color uh, bell style knobs. They were changed before whoever had it before me. I believe I'm the second owner of this guitar. And then I believe the strap buttons were changed. But other than that, everything else is stock. Like I said, your typical epiphone les paul gibson style uh specs the truss rod i'm pretty sure it's just a standard truss rod i haven't even had to adjust it yet so i haven't been in there to check it out i'm not sure if it's dual action or not i really doesn't say on the specs i'm gonna guess and say it's not and just say it's a standard truss rod if you know let me know in the comments i'm definitely down to learn more about this guitar i've done some research but you know just enough to kind of learn about it and do the review so, like I said, your basic specs, uh, you've heard it in a full mix demo. Let's go ahead and do distortion and clean and go through all the different switch positions.
right, well, you heard it in a full demo mix. We went over the specs. You heard the guitar by itself, all the different tonal options that it will provide. So pretty much, I love this thing. Uh, I've always been the guy that's never, that was always like, I'm never going to play Gibsons or Epiphones or Fenders or anything like that. I always like Super Strats and anything made for metal, seven strings, stuff like that. Uh, and I kind of just wanted to try something different. I'm getting a little bit older. I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but uh, I kind of came across this thing, and I have to say, I really, really love this guitar. Um, for the price that you can get them, uh, I think it's an awesome thing. Uh, obviously, I don't think I'm going to go out and buy a Gibson or anything, uh, but for the quality and the price that you can pick up an Epiphone uh, for nowadays, I think it is a great build. Um, like I said, I don't care about the whole made in China thing. I don't, that doesn't bother me. I've never been the one to uh, really care about where it's made as long as it's a good guitar. And if I enjoy playing it, that's all that matters to me, honestly. Um, but I was thoroughly impressed with this guitar. I really, like I said, love the matte and the gloss mixture of finishes. I think that's really awesome. Surprisingly, I really like this open pour style wood, uh, even on the back of the neck, I think is a cool feel. It's still smooth, but you can still feel like the open pores in the wood. So that's really cool. Uh, I love the thickness of the neck. I think it's like a, I forget what they call it, like a tapered D shape or something like that. But uh, definitely has a thicker feel than what I'm used to. And I honestly, I really like it. So nothing to complain about there. Um, as far as stuff, maybe something that I don't like about it, I have to say the only thing I could find was maybe the fretwork isn't that great. Uh, it could probably benefit from maybe a spot leveling, uh, a little bit of crowning and some polishing. But other than that, they're really not that bad. They're obviously, the ends aren't sharp or anything. Um, but it, it does buzz a little bit, but it's not to where there's any dead frets. And I have my action pretty low it's uh probably you know 1.5 1.4 millimeters right now so it's uh it's a little bit below like standard height for action and uh it you know buzzes a little bit but it's nothing that has dead frets or doesn't fret out or anything when you bend or anything so i'm going to leave it right where it is i haven't had to adjust the truss rod at all the neck hasn't moved since i got it and honestly i put the action where i like and really haven't had to touch it at all so pretty impressive i think that's really really cool i really love the tuning stability of this guitar that's probably something that impresses me the most about it but i really don't have too many bad things to say about it honestly i was expecting to maybe have a list of things that i don't like about it um and i really can't think of much to be honest i was thinking i was going to put like emgs or something in it i kind of bought it with that idea and as soon as I played it, I was like, I'm not changing a thing about this guitar because I love the way it sounds. It's like I have plenty of guitars that have that metal vibe with, you know, you can push a lot of gain through it. And uh, I was like, why not have something a little bit different? So super glad I uh, picked this thing up. I know you guys are probably like, well, you're just being biased or whatever, but there's really no reason to. I'm being completely honest. I really don't have much that I don't like about this guitar. So... I think for what the price that these things go for nowadays, you really can't go wrong. I think even the Epiphones are somewhat better than the Gibsons in some ways. From what I've been hearing on like, uh, you know, videos of guys like Philip McKnight and stuff like that. Uh, he's even saying that. So, I mean, I really, I know you guys want to hear me complain about some stuff, but I don't know what to really say. I think I just really love this thing. Unfortunately, it is sold. Uh, because I always like moving on to the next one to bring in more guitars to review and stuff. Uh, and I'm pretty bummed about it. I really never thought I'd own one and it was a short lived time, but we'll get another one. That's obviously we can't, it's not like we'll never own or play one again. So it is what it is. I've gotten to the point where I can love a guitar and not be attached to it to where I can still sell it. So I'm going to be sad to see it go, but uh, be excited to get the next one in here. So. I love it. That's pretty much all I could say. But that's it for this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button. Maybe think about subscribing. And uh, yeah, drink a lot of water. Be a good person. Eat your vegetables. And uh, we'll see you in the next video.